Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to A Short Stop on Pool. Last week I said I'd find an old rack of straight pool to show, and I did just that. This is from May of 2019, so this is about six months after I came back to pool from 10 years off. This is a nice old Brunswick with five-inch pockets. So you'd think that might make the rack easier, but we learned uh, last week that's not necessarily the case. There's some trouble that I need to work through in this rack. I also found it very interesting that this is before I started reworking my fundamentals. So you see a lot of elbow movement, some rising up on the shot, facing the shot pretty squarely with my shoulders sticking out. And yet I'm pocketing balls pretty well and I feel like my stroke is pretty smooth. So while good fundamentals are very important, they're not everything. There's a lot to be said for concentration and desire. I'm also shooting with the original extra length maple shaft for my cue. So this is about a 60 and a half inch long cue. And as you know, nowadays I'm shooting with a 68-inch cue. So my posture is quite different. Anyway, I like how I deal with the trouble in this rack. So let's get into the rack. I got a pretty good spread of the balls on that rack. There's only four in the, in the rack area. But did anyone notice what happened with the cue ball? That I actually didn't strike that very well. That should have been a smooth follow stroke. And instead I hit it with a center ball. Let's take a quick look. In slow motion, you can see the cue ball actually hopped over the rack. And then there was just a little bit of follow that made it occur forward into the rail. The rack analysis here is pretty easy. I've got the four balls in the rack area. I have two great potential break shots in the 7 and 11. And I have two trouble balls, the 1 and the 10. They're both rail balls near the side pocket. And so that's something I want to deal with early in the rack. The 12 balls, right where you might want a key ball for my break shots, and one of those rail balls could actually be the K2 ball to set up for that key ball. Although I do something different, we'll see that in just a moment. So as most players would do, I choose the very easiest shot first, and that's the nine ball. And then from that position, I see immediately a way to deal with the balls in the center of the table. This five ball lets me go real naturally into that cluster. And the stripe near the five ball is an insurance ball, so this is a no-brainer. Now at this point I consider the rack solved and what I mean is there's no more clusters. I don't need to run into any more balls. I want to find a pattern where I can run the table with my cue ball never getting into trouble. And what I see is a way to get on the 10 ball. So I want right now I'm attacking trouble balls number two and three. The three ball was the right shot there because it opens up both corner pockets to the two ball. It un clusters the center of the table. Now initially I was looking at the 13 next, but I'm attacking that 10. So this stripe in the corner is going to get me on the 10 ball, and then I'm going to figure out a way to get on the 1. That's pretty close to straight in position, which is not a good thing. I, I was hoping for a little bit of an angle, because then I can bounce the cue ball off the rail and maybe do a little something. On the positive side, it makes pocketing the ball real easy, but I can't do anything with the cue ball, which means I pretty much got to shoot the 12 ball on the side next. And here I have to credit those five inch pockets for accepting that widely struck ball. I don't want to follow forward to the side rail for the one because there isn't very much rail above the one. I'd rather shoot the one ball from the other side. So you saw me walk around and look, I'm probably going to shoot the 11 ball next unless if I can hit this soft enough to get on the 6. Now I have to shoot the 11 ball and then use the 13 to lay on the side rail below the 1. And you can see how that little positional error from that stripe in the lower corner has caused me this trouble three shots later. If I had a slight angle on that ball into the corner pocket, maybe I could have done something else that would have been easier. As it is, this isn't all that bad. And the four ball really helps because that means that when I shoot the one in the corner, I don't have to do much of anything with the cue ball for position. So now I'm probably going to walk over and yeah, check the angle. See just where you want to get. Looks like I want to lay up on the rail. And that gives me a very slight angle to move the cue ball away from the rail. Well, I got a slight angle. Maybe that's what I wanted. Laying the cue ball directly on the rail was probably a real tough proposition from there. But here, my next ball is either going to be the 4 or the 2 or the 8. I've got uh, plenty of options. 
What I don't have is a key ball directly above the seven ball break shot. Notice that there's only five balls left. That means including the break shot, I've shot 10 shots. And every one of those shots was to deal with the trouble in this rack, those balls in the center of the table, and then two rail balls. It took 10 shots to do that. I've got four balls left for my end pattern. And for me, this is pretty automatic. Shoot the four to get on the six, and then use the two to get on the eight, or the eight to get on the two. Either the two or eight could function as a key ball for the seven ball break shot rather easily. Now it looks like I've gone to the two ball. That's a good choice because I've got four ways to get on the break shot from the eight ball. Let's look at them. Number one, I can follow forward off the side rail. Number two, I can stun straight up table. Number three, I can go one rail off the bottom rail and straight back up. And number four, I can go two rails out of the corner. What I didn't do is decide which one of those I wanted before I shot the six ball. And that's why I've got the wrong angle on the two ball and I need to draw straight back. And then wouldn't you know it, when I drew straight back, I was trying to get low so I could do option two and stun up. And I ended up straight in rather than having an angle. And I have a theory about this. I think from so many years of playing nine ball, you've kind of get this idea in your head that you want to be straight in on your nine ball shot so that you can make it real easily. And so somehow I just subconsciously end up with straight in position if you don't consciously think about it. Regardless, I've got to deal with it. So I look at this shot and see how straight is it. Can I draw straight back off the side rail and out the center table? Can I cheat the pocket and follow forward two rails out of the corner? And it's just so close to straight. I, I just decide I don't want to do either of those and I'm going to take the easy way out, which is a stop shot and take ball in hand in the kitchen. So I made some trouble for myself after dealing with those three trouble areas of the rack. And now I've got more trouble because what should have been a pretty easy break shot I've, is now a long shot. And I want to give myself a fairly shallow angle on this shot so I can see the pocket and increase the pocketing percentage of this shot. If I was closer, I would be hitting it pretty hard. But here, I just want to shoot low on the cue ball and cinch that ball. I'm not trying to blast the rack, just knock up a couple loose and hopefully I can continue from there. Thank you for watching and I hope you found that informative and helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Check out my book, A Short Stop on Straight Pool. You can find it at shortstoponpool.com and stay tuned for next week's Rack of the Week.